In chapter 1, you saw that data frames are composed of three parts, a NumPy array for the data, and two indexes to store the row and column details. Here's the dog data set again. Recall that dot .columns contains an index object of column names, and dot .index contains an index object of row numbers. You can move a column from the body of the data frame to the index. This is called setting an index, and it uses the setIndex method. Notice that the output has changed slightly. In particular, a quick visual clue that name is now in the index is that the index values are left aligned rather than right aligned. To undo what you just did, you can reset the index. That is, you remove it. This is done via reset index. Reset index has a drop argument that allows you to discard an index. Here, setting drop to true entirely removes the dog names. You may be wondering why you should bother with indexes. The answer is that it makes subsetting code cleaner. Consider this example of subsetting for the rows where the dog is called Bella or Stella. It's a fairly tricky line of code for such a simple task. Now look at the equivalent when the names are in the index. Data frames have a subsetting method called loc which filters on index values. Here you simply pass the dog names to log as a list. Much easier. The values in the index don't need to be unique. Here, there are two Labradors in the index. Now, if you subset on Labrador using log, all the Labrador data is returned. You can include multiple columns in the index by passing a list of column names to set index. Here, breed and color are included. These are called multi-level indexes or hierarchical indexes. The terms are synonymous. There is an implication here that the inner level of index, in this case color, is nested inside the outer level, breed. To take a subset of rows at the outer level index, you pass a list of index values to loc. Here, the list contains Labrador and Chihuahua and the resulting subset contains all dogs from both breeds. To subset on inner levels, you need to pass a list of tuples. Here, the first tuple specifies Labrador at the outer level and Brown at the inner level. The resulting rows have to match all conditions from a tuple. For example, the black Labrador wasn't returned because the Brown condition wasn't matched. In chapter 1, you saw how to sort the rows of a data frame using sort values. You can also sort by index values using sort index. By default, it sorts all index levels from outer to inner, in ascending order. You can control the sorting by passing lists to the level and ascending arguments. Indexes are controversial. Although they simplify subsetting code, there are some downsides. Index values are just data. Storing data in multiple forms makes it harder to think about. There's a concept called tidy data, where data is stored in tabular form, like a data frame. Each row contains a single observation, and each variable is stored in its own column. Indexes violate the last rule, since index values don't get their own column. In Pandas, the syntax for working with indexes is different from the syntax for working with columns. By using two syntaxes, your code is more complicated, which can result in more bugs. If you decide you don't want to use indexes, that's perfectly reasonable. However, it's useful to know how they work for cases when you need to read other people's code. In this chapter, you'll work with monthly time series of air temperatures in cities around the world. Let's get indexing.